What you're about to witness could change the course of history. If they is anything the Westerners are good at doing is killing the living and missing the dead. Yes, you heard me right. Water-powered car from Nigerian innovator hits hard. Yo, I am Dr. Cool. Welcome to 2025, where African youth has decided to F up the Western education system and put a hole in Western economic parachute. Welcome to 2025, where a car doesn't need gasoline or charging infrastructure to get it on the road. Welcome to 2025, where African believes that Western education system in Africa is a scam and go ahead to prove it. It's unbelievable. Guess what? And now it's just playing out just as they have said it. And the Westerners are left fuming with hate and envy. That's what they are good at. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? The West should be ready for the shock of their life. As the young, talented, vibrant heroes of African breeds are taking the bull by the horn, while the Western engineers and scientists disproved perpetual motion technology not feasible. They instead build technology that puts individuals in perpetual roller coaster of energy dependence that keeps them bleeding perpetually financially and otherwise. Yes, haters, yes, this technology is not new, we know. However, get into mainstream. No, no, what the hell is wrong with the West? Profit, PF the selected few, over environmental concerns. You know, the Western world hasn't gotten out of the shock from Maxwell Chikum Butso self-powered technology. The Western mainstream media blackout on Maxwell Chikum Butso self-powered car isn't just over. That relegated their established scientific community and engineers into muddy puddles. Don't even get me started with YouTube community of Westerners playing same suppression tactics like their fathers. Then comes this Nigerian innovator. Be my guest. Stanley Meyer would be proud of his invention as he couldn't sell it and set it for the people. Still Westerners couldn't believe it until he was dead. Now they believed it works. Terrible Westerners are good at killing the living and missing the dead, simply put. Cooking one of their own is not a damn thing, not to mention other race. Imagine in a world where fossil fuel giants control global energy, a young Nigerian innovator, a primary school dropout, has defied the odds. He has cracked the code to a water-powered car. That's right, a new Stanley Meyer has emerged from Africa and the Western corporate elite may need to prepare for what's coming. For too long, Africa has been dependent on foreign oil markets. The West tells us what energy is, who controls it, and how much we should pay for it, but young African minds are refusing to wait for permission to innovate. This 25-year-old self-taught genius, whose name is withheld for security reasons, has single-handedly shattered the boundaries of what we thought was possible. Unlike Western scientists with billion-dollar research facilities, he worked with basic tools, local materials, and an unbreakable spirit. His work proves one undeniable truth. The future of energy may not be written by the West, but by young Africans willing to think beyond imposed limits. Now, skeptics will say a car cannot run on water. They will argue that this defies established science, but let's break this down. The young engineer's system is based on splitting water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is then fed into the combustion chamber, replacing gasoline entirely. Unlike traditional hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, which require high-pressure storage tanks, this system generates hydrogen on demand. The modified intake system connected through a quick-connect coupler ensures the engine runs smoothly with no reliance on fossil fuels. Here is a clip of the demonstration. If you need scientific approval, got get one yourself and shove it under your pillow, because African don't care about your scientific proof so long as it works. It's simple, it's elegant, and most importantly, it works. But here's the real question. Why hasn't this technology been mainstreamed? Why do we still depend on oil when alternatives exist? If history has taught us anything, it's that every time a disruptive energy breakthrough emerges, those in power move to silence it. Take Stanley Meyer, the American inventor who developed a water fuel cell in the 1990s. He claimed his car could travel across the US on just 22 gallons of water. But before his invention could reach mass adoption, he mysteriously died after meeting with investors. His work was dismissed, his patents quietly disappeared, and his legacy was buried. Then there's Nikola Tesla, whose wireless energy transmission technology could have freed the world from dependence on centralized power grids. But after financial backers realized his invention could not be monetized, his funding was pulled and his work was shut down. And now, Maxwell Chikumbutso, the Zimbabwean engineer who built a self-powered generator is facing skepticism and suppression attempts. Well, I said, who is Maxwell? Maybe I'm the farmer that people talked about. Maybe I'm the arm which they talked about. I 
don't know. I'm determined. And starting from tomorrow, the cars will be on market. The motorbikes will be on market. We have completed the R and D. We have got all certifications that we wanted. Right away, compliance, C standards, FCC standards, ISO certifications. We have everything that is needed. We thank God for that. Thank you for your time. Despite numerous demonstrations proving its legitimacy, this young Nigerian engineer has just disrupted the energy industry in ways we haven't seen in decades. But how long will it take before powerful interests step in? If a simple, affordable, water powered car reaches mass adoption, oil companies, car manufacturers, and governments reliant on fuel taxes stand to lose trillions of dollars. It's not just about proving the science, it's about whether those in power will allow such a breakthrough to exist. The truth is, energy is not just about technology, it's about control. Those who control energy control the world. And Africa has been kept in a state of dependency for too long. But this breakthrough has the potential to change that forever. Imagine a Nigeria where people no longer queue for hours at gas stations. Imagine an Africa where farmers, businesses and entire industries no longer suffer because of fuel shortages. The impact of a working, water-powered vehicle is not just about cars, it's about complete energy independence. If this technology scales up, it could mean the end of fuel scarcity, no more skyrocketing petrol prices and a total transformation of Africa's economy. Western powers are not ready for this. They rely on African nations to remain dependent on imported fuel. But what happens when that dependency ends? Despite mounting evidence, many Western scientists will still dismiss this invention. They'll call it pseudoscience. They'll claim it violates the laws of physics. But here's the irony. The same Western scientists who ridiculed free energy are now struggling to explain Maxwell Chikumbuzo's self-powered generator. The reality is that the established scientific community has been wrong before. They once believed heavier-than-air flight was impossible until the Wright brothers proved them wrong. They mocked those who suggested electricity could be wireless until modern tech proved otherwise. And now they are in denial about energy breakthroughs coming from Africa. The world is changing and African inventors are leading the charge. They are no longer waiting for Western approval. They are proving time and time again that innovation is universal.
wanda kuke da ni a shi zan bada zan tada da shi yana yi yana da ni ga dokin yana bada yanzu ne yana shiga cikin inji direct so nan ni ji dai ni testing lallai wannan ana sa mu toci daban-daban har mashin ma ana sa wa inda a riga an dabi ana yin wannan abu ko da sai yanzu ne yace to ba bare ni dan kirkiro shi inda the young Nigerian behind this invention has done what oil billionaires and tech giants never wanted. He has shown the world that energy can be free. The question is, what happens next? Will governments and corporations allow this technology to thrive? Or will we see yet another case of suppression, silencing and corporate intervention? This is not the end. This is just the beginning. And if Africa continues on this path, the energy revolution will not be televised. It will be engineered. Africa will no longer wait.